when it comes to the long and dark history regarding our intelligence agencies throughout the world, one uh, agency that comes to mind uh, with a very nefarious past and a very secret history is the Safari Club that had connections uh, to the Central Intelligence Agency in which they received their funding from the Bank and Credit Commerce International, the real axis of evil. Um, not many people are aware of the Safari Club. The media hardly ever reports it. And if you Google the Safari Club, basically you come up with a bunch of kids' books. But in history of the last 30 or 40 years, the Safari Club has been sorely underreported with a few venerable journalists such as Seymour Hirsch has ever uh, done any summaries or articles regarding this history of the Safari Club. Today, we're going to be talking about how this agent, how this organization was involved with many of the uh, beginning stages of ending communism within the region of the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and the Balkans, and how this uh, organization uh, had financed uh, Mujahideen fighters in which they were receiving payments from a bank, which is notoriously uh, known for money laundering, to known uh, Arab and global criminals around the world. Um, the Safari Club was founded on September 1st, 1976. Um, an Egyptian reporter digging through Iranian government archives uh, from the Iranian Revolution in Tehran had unearthed documents which showed the secretive club um, operating in the Middle East region. Uh, the group played a secret role in political intrigues in many countries, uh, mainly in Africa and the Middle East, while being primarily funded through secret backdoor deals uh, from government banks and independent operations, illegal black operations. Uh, one of the primary functions of generating funds to satisfy their uh, secret operations and tasks was through the Pakistani Merchant Bank of Bank of Credit and Commerce International, or in short, BCCI. Um, Saudi Intelligence Minister Kamal Adham was the Director General of the Saudi Arabian al Mukbarat al Kama, or the General Intelligence Directorate. Um, al Ama was known as a um, gregarious man, and he also served as a royal counselor to both King Faisal and King Khalid. But three and a half years prior, the BCCI Bank was founded by a Pakistani named Agha Hassan Abidi, who is an associate of Adham's. Many countries aligned with the Safari Club would have closed-door meetings with the bank's leading managers, and in time, the Central Intelligence Agency would also shadow the club, but not become an, an official member of it. Uh, instead, it remained as a close partner of its formal members. Um, George H.W. Bush, the director of the CIA at the time, uh, would have uh, a bank account with BCCI and have many dealings with important members within the bank's account holders. In, in time, BCI, BCCI became the fastest growing bank in the world. And Time Magazine once described it as not just a bank, but, quote, a global intelligence operation and a mafia-like enforcement squad operating primarily out of the bank's offices in Karachi, Pakistan. The 1,500 employee black network has used sophisticated spy equipment and techniques, along with bribery, extortion, kidnapping, and even, by some accounts, murder. The Black Network, so named by its own members, stops at almost nothing to further the bank's aims the world over, end quote. However, the Safari Club's purpose 
was to oppose Soviet influence by supporting anti-communists. And in John P. Miglietta's book, American, Al American Alliance Policy in the Middle East, 1945 to 1992, he outlined the importance for the formation of the Safari Club. Quote, the Shah provided covert assistance to groups seeking to destabilize the governments of Soviet allies in the region, such as Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as providing assistance to pro-Western governments such as Oman and South Vietnam. In an effort to further advance these goals, the Shah of Iran, associated with a group of conservative Middle Eastern and African states in an informal organization known as the Safari Club. The group was dedicated to blocking the spread of Soviet influence in the third world, end quote. As the Safari Club uh, was beginning operations, uh, former CIA director Richard Helms and Theodore Shackley uh, were under scrutiny from Congress and feared that the new covert operations would quickly become exposed. Um, famed author and historian Peter Dale Scott has classified the Safari Club as part of a second CIA an extension of the organization's reach maintained by uh, autonomous groups of key agents. Uh, thus, even as Jimmy Carter's new CIA director, Stansfield Turner, attempted to limit the scope of the agency's operations, um, Shackley, his deputy, Thomas Klein, and Edward P. Wilson secretly maintained their connections with both the Safari Club and BCCI. Um, the Safari Club was formed through covert means and was signed by five of each country's dignitaries. Uh, Alexander de Marchands, um, who is France's external intelligence agency manager. Kamal Adham, Saudi Arabia's general intelligence directorate. Kamal Hassan Ali, the Egyptian director of intelligence. Ahmed Dalimi, Moroccan Director of Intelligence and Commander of the Moroccan Army, and General Namtala Nasiri from Iran's SAVAK group, S-A-V-A-K. Um, they would all sign the charter, which was kept in a locked safe uh, under the watchful eyes of De Marchands. And the goal was pretty straightforward. Uh, it was to stop the impending force of communism, uh, which was emanating from the Soviet Union by affiliating and financially supporting the anti-communists, um, which comes into play the old adage, uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, would come into play for certain countries of the Safari Club. Although the United States was itself not a member, uh, the CIA led by um, Director William Colby was involved through backdoor deals, uh, which was continued by its next director even more um, aggressively, um, who was absolutely loyal to the apparatus, George H.W. Bush, in 1977. The name of the Safari Club was, of course, uh, Debar Chance's idea after he went on a trip with uh, associates to a resort in Kenya in 1976 when he first met um, Adhan. Ali and Nasari, um, its headquarters would be in Cairo, Egypt, and the Safari Club would begin opening accounts made from and uh, influenced by Director Bush in 1977 because he already had an account there through BCCI Bank, and it became its main conduit to funnel large sums of money to the tunes literally of upwards of tens of millions of dollars um, and involving Saudi arms deal Adnan Khashoggi, who is also a close friend with Kamal Adham, Saudi director of the GID. Um, Adham was also appointed by Saudi King Faisal to head the GID, as well as to begin to serve uh, with closer affairs with Egypt and its state security investigation service, intelligence arm. Um, by April 27, 1978, Nur Mohammed Taraki, and the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan, or the PDPA, otherwise known as the Kalk faction, supported by Marxist supporters in the form of Soviet Union, 
seized total power in Afghanistan. Now, Afghanistan President, President Sandar Mohammad Daoud um, was overthrown and murdered in a coup led by pro-communist rebels. Um, while the country implements better education and the, a secular point of view, um, mass executions begin to take place, including many of the conservative religious leaders uh, from the, uh, the city of Kabul, which is the capital, um, many of the southern uh, cities, uh, Pashtun farmers, and political oppression becomes unprecedented in Afghan history, igniting a revolt by Mujahideen rebels, um, Afghans, basically. Um, this began a, fo a, a following an uprising in April of 1979, in which Taraki, who is close to um, uh, Taraki, who is deposed by the Kalk faction, Hafizullah Amin in September. Amin was actually close to Taraki, but Taraki was executed. Now, Amin, along with uh, Afghan communists, were even more brutal against uh, the Pashtun farmers and the Afghan population than Taraki ever was. And their tactics were capricious in its apathetic nature, you know, which even shocked their Soviet handlers uh, in the communist homeland of the Soviet Union. And by December, Amin's government had lost control of much of the country due to the backlash prompting the Soviet Union military to invade Kabul, Afghanistan, execute Amin and install Parcham leader Barbrak Kamral as president. Um, this was unprecedented to have a foreign country, especially one that is a constant threat to the, um, the democratic nature of the United States, as well as to the uh, pan-Arabist uh, countries itself, which saw a threat. In fact, Pakistan actually uh, became very uh, threatened by uh, the Soviet Union in that they started pumping uh, millions of dollars into these madrasas, hoping that um, they would act, they would engage in a uh, jihadist mentality, in which it did much later on with the um, the arrival of Abdul Azam. However, U.S. President Jimmy Carter was surprised to hear from his White House advisors, led by National Security Advisor Zygmunt Brzezinski, that the Soviets had invaded Afghanistan. And this was seen as a complete power move for global dominance. In fact, Brzezinski would rather author a book called The Grand Chessboard, in which he outlined what the United States needed to do against the Soviet bloc in order to maintain as the global superpower, because uh, if the Soviet Union was successful in controlling Afghanistan, that means that they would control the oil trade because from there they would probably gain um, regional dominance, not just in Afghanistan, but also in Pakistan and maybe even Iran or even Iraq or even Saudi Arabia. So Carter was determined to respond vigorously to what he considered a dangerous provocation. And in a televised speech, he announced his sanctions on the Soviet Union and promised renewal aid to Pakistan and committed the United, the United States to the Persian Gulf's defense. Now, this was a um, not a surprising move in regards to funneling aid to Pakistan, even though Pakistan itself has a sordid history with the intelligence services, uh, the ISI, and uh, their uh, seemingly uh, extremist ultra-Orthodox views regarding their theology. But like I said, uh, when it comes to uh, the old adage of my friend, my, the, the friend of my friend is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Um, but other countries followed suit, and British, uh, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher um, enthusiastically backed Carter's tough stance. Although the British intelligence, um, MI6, believed the CIA was being too alarmist about the Soviet threat to Pakistan, um, they probably were right. But by early 1980, Carter initiated a program to arm the Mujahideen uh, through Pakistan's ISI and secure a pledge from Saudi Arabia to match U.S. funding for that purpose because Saudi Arabia was flush with cash through the um, oil, uh, early oil embargo, which was alleviated. And U.S. support for the Mujahideen accelerated 
under Carter's successor, Ronald Reagan. Um, so from here, the CIA began covertly assisting the Afghan rebels by providing them with arms and funding through numerous factions led by uh, Gulbuddin Hekbatar, leader of the Hezbi Aslimi, Abdul Rasul Sayaf, leader of the Islamic Union for Liberation of Afghanistan, and Ahmed Shah Massoud, leader of the Jamiat e Islami. Um, and m- some of this funding also came through the BCCI Bank as well, and through the drug trade and through the Maktab al Kitimat, which was later um, headed by not just Abdul Azam, but Ayman al Swahiri and Osam bin Laden, who would later have um, detrimental um, uh, influence to the United States much later. Uh, the office would also benefit from funding from the CIA and Saudi donors in the kingdom. Um, so the Pakistan's ISI, CIA, and British MI6 uh, began funneling hundreds of millions as well as military-grade weaponry to the Mujahideen. Uh, some of that funding even saw its way through, not just through Hekmatar and Abdul Sayaf, but also to the Maktab al Kitimat in its main office in Peshawar, Pakistan, and later um, in a office that was located uh, through the Kiv- uh, Al Kifa Refugee Center in Brooklyn, New York, which was also monitored by the FBI, and the CIA began pumping money as well as Saudi donors. And this started um, a branch out effect of having notable uh, Wahhabi. Uh, leaders coming to the United States, Omar Abdel Rahman of the Gamma Islamia terrorist group in Egypt, Abdul Azam, um, who started promoting um, the notion of global defense of jihad, which was a later on to be evolved to a global jihad against Western invaders, secular invaders. And that would include the United States and Israel and any affiliates along with it and even to an extent Saudi Arabia because they committed a great offense, according to bin Laden, when they invited the United States to uh, defend it from the invading Iraqi army, which was not going to happen. It was a fictional story, but it worked nonetheless. And so um, bin Laden himself refused any American funding. Now, there's uh, some conspiracy theorists out there who say that bin Laden was a CIA asset, named Tim Osman, which is ridiculous. Um, and he was funded or trained by the CIA. And this too isn't necessarily correct. Um, bin Laden refused any American funding as he had his own assets from his father's construction business to help build roads uh, through the Saudi bin Laden group. Um, but this is not to say that maybe some of the funding that the CIA was giving to the Bakhtab al Kitimat, which was partly jointly owned by bin Laden, um, that he saw indirect payments. That could have happened easily. So I'm not dismiss, dismissing there. Um, so what turned the tide of the Afghanistan war? Well, the advent of Stinger missiles, which was approved under by U.S. President Ronald Reagan and assisted by CIA Director George H.W. Bush, who was the vice president um, under Reagan, through uh, Operation Cyclone. Uh, And this had helped turn the tide of the war to benefit the Mujahideen, and the CIA was the primary benefactor. Um, It would later come out that the Afghan Mujahideen and also the Arabs, uh, the foreign uh, Islamists themselves, began to... Uh, use their training for Stinger missiles to shoot down helicopters and planes. This also would have um, an important issue raised in regards to um, the uh, Battle of Mogadishu, in which everybody has probably seen, most people have seen the movie Black Hawk Down, where you see um, Somalian, uh, uh, un- uh, Somalian operatives um, shooting down um helicopters from Stinger missiles. Well, there is um, some uh, historical analysis for this regarding bin Laden, who actually moved to the Sudan and aided um, Mohammed Farah Aidid 
against the Americans, uh, U.S. Army Rangers and Delta Force, who tried to extract uh, Farah Adid, but were unsuccessful. But as they were getting there, um, the Stinger missiles that were shot from these operatives were later to be reported to be trained by not just Ali Muhammad, who have links with Omar Abdel Rahman and bin Laden, but also by Abu Banshiri al Banshiri, who is, uh, and Muhammad Ataf, uh, Abu Hafs al Masri, who um, was the military commander in chief of Al Qaeda. So basically, the commanders in Afghanistan uh, from the al Musab uh, camp uh, basically would later have ramifications against the United States in regards to how they train for Stinger missiles. Um, by this time, with the Iranian Revolution in full tilt, the Safari Club ceased operations, but would continue to exist under much more covert means. And by this time, William Casey, who's now the director of the CIA, began solidifying the relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia. Uh, this would prove very fruitful because both would use the Soviet-Afghan war as the means to an end to finally eliminate the communist bloc from expanding any further, and Bush later becomes the vice president under Reagan. But the final result would be that a far more reaching and dangerous adversary would come into play in replacement of the, um, the communist bloc, and that would be the fundamental Wahhabi extremists or the Mujahideen. Um, and this would be supported by the Saudi kingdom as a means to divert attention away from being a victim of said terrorism because they had the United States as an ally and the United States military defending the two holiest places in all of Islam, Mecca and Medina. Now, hundreds of millions will find its way to madrasas throughout Southeast Asia, inside the United States, with the CIA either looking the other way or being completely ignorant of said funding. I would find that hard to believe, but uh, we'll leave it as it lay. Um, now, the funds would help build and recruit Sunni extremists, Wahhabis, uh, from all over the world. People who entered the Afghan war, and as the war ended, they went back to their respective countries. And because of the earlier invigilation of these um, uh, Wahhabi or extremist um, mouthpieces that were um, extolling um, the, ne the need for defensive global jihad and also to demonize the West in Rahman and Azam and bin Laden now have come full circle because when the war ended, the jihad never ended because that's the purpose of Rahman and bin Laden's and Amin al Swahiri's purpose and the goal was to extend uh, the war outside of Afghanistan and defeat secular invaders. Now, near the end of the Soviet-Afghan war, the BCCI Bank had access to $4 billion, and they had 145 branches in 46 countries. With many of these hidden accounts and money laundering from some of the world's most nefarious individuals, including um, Muammar Gaddafi, Abu Nidal, uh, the Medellin cartel, um, even Osama bin Laden, um, and according to a Time report uh, uh, by Richard Lacayo in 2001, when BCCI had been brought under the light by a British investigation codenamed Sandstrom, the CIA, along with the National Security Agency, had many accounts in the, uh, the now suspect bank. Quote, Alan Fires head of the CIA Central America Task Force from 1984 to 1986, pleaded guilty on Tuesday to two counts of lying to Congress about when high-ranking intelligence officials first learned of the illegal diversion of funds to the Contras. Fires said he became aware of the diversions and informed Claire George, then the CIA's Deputy Director for Operations, in the summer of 1986. But Fires says George ordered him to deny any knowledge of the transfers when he testified before the House Intelligence Committee that October in exchange for being allowed to plead guilty to two misdemeanors instead of more serious felonies, Fires is now assisting Walsh's investigation. With his help, Walsh will probably seek a perjury indictment of George and perhaps of the president 
and former government officials, end quote. By 1989, the Soviets retreated under the mediation of Pakistan, held by General Mohammad Zia ul Haq. And with a full, full withdrawal uh, in plan, the U.S. affinity with the war ended suddenly, and to the surprise of many of the world's agencies, it left the Mujahideen without any plan for a future, and many of them returned back to their countries of origin and of origin. And this left Afghanistan in a state of disarray and turmoil in which two civil wars took place, killing far more in just nine years than with a full 10 years of war with the Soviets. This would anger some of the Sunni affiliates and their radical Islamists, and this will come back to haunt the United States in the years to come. Um, in the Civil War, we saw um, Ahmed Shah Massoud of the Northern Alliance fight against Mullah Omar of the Taliban, which was created through Pakistan, and uh, they, they took control of the South. Um, now, the Iran-Contra scandal had saw itself come under full swing, uh, full swing with the Reagan administration feigning full ignorance on the matter, but not from Pentagon officials and even some within the State Department who had taken the fall for siphoning funds from under then General Oliver North, who had been tasked to supervise, supervise the funds, which was supposed to make its way in Iran in hopes of releasing American hostages. Um, Iran was under an arms embargo at the time. But some of this funding actually went to the Contras in Nicaragua in their conflict with the anti-Sandinistas against the, so, uh, the socialist regime. Um, however, Defense Secretary Casper uh, Weinberger had taken down handwritten notes in suing the full notice and compliance from U.S. President Reagan, who in turn feigned ignorance on the matter and was well, but meanwhile, he's well aware of the transfer of funds and weapons to moderate elements within Iran. And I use that moderate elements very lightly. Um, they weren't moderates, actually. Um, but uh, by 1991, BCCI Bank had been forced to close worldwide um, under the Sandstrom Report and the British investigation and the spectacle of the Iran-Contra affair, which had damaged the State Department and Arab nationalist states replaced by the Wahhabi ideology and rise of its ultra-Orthodox movement, um, uh, which was funded by Saudi Arabia. Um, with the CIA returning to full swing by its former director, Bush, by regrouping the Safari Club underground. Um, the Safari Club never really had uh, ceased to exist. It basically uh, became um, a combination of other organizations in time. So the beginning of a more volatile world uh, would begin to take place at this time in the form of international Islamic terrorism, which began back in 1979 with the seizure of the Grand Mosque in Saudi Arabia, the Egyptian Islamists assassinating Anwar Sadat, the Iranian revolution under Ayatollah Khomeini, and of course, the CIA's assistance externally and internally of many of the Islamic charities and recruitment offices led by the Maktab al khidmat in the United States. And so, as you could see, um, this triumvirate of evil led by uh, the Central Intelligence Agency, um, who uh, was siphoning funds from Bank and Credit Commerce to help the Safari Club uh, and its intelligence agencies and operatives uh, to battle uh, the communist bloc. In return, they have created a far more volatile enemy, which still exists today, all under the watchful eyes of the intelligence apparatuses. And this has a direct link to not just the September 11th attacks of 2001, but also to the 1993 World Trade Center bombing, the USS Cole bombing of 2000, uh, the Lockerbie bombing, uh, the Cobar Towers bombing, um, and also the uh, the Millennium Plot and Project, uh, the uh, Bajinka Plot as well, and the Landmarks Plot. And all these have uh, a branch out effect and historical start, and it started within these three entities, 
that is hardly ever talked about in history books or with the media. Um, and so uh, I would implore anybody watching this video to try and get a better understanding of the BCCI Bank, the Central Intelligence Agency, and the Safari Club, and you'll understand why these terrorist operations later took place and why they were allowed to happen all under the watchful eyes of the intelligence apparatus led by the CIA.